Hello and welcome to One and All. I, Dr. Asavri Savant, on behalf of Team ISW Council, welcome you all to this grand panel discussion on organ donation, which is a gift of life, powered by Manipal Hospitals. So on this occasion for organ donation awareness, we are doing this session with renowned doctors from Manipal Hospitals. Please allow me to welcome Dr. Sunil Karat, who is the chairman and HOD and consultant of critical care medicine at Manipal Hospital Old Airport Road. I welcome you, sir. We also welcome Dr. Deepak Dube, who is HOD and consultant of urology and robotic surgery and renal transplantation at Manipal Hospital Old Airport Road. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Next, we welcome Dr. Devananda NS, who is head and consultant of cardiothoracic vascular surgery at Manipal Hospital Old Airport Road. Welcome, sir. Thank you. With that, and with the uh, it going on prevalence on people wanting to know more information about organ donation, as well as uh, public want, wanting to know what are the latest advances that are going on into this field, we start our discussion. My first question is to Dr. Sunil. So let us start with the basics. And please, could you explain us what is the current status and scenario of organ donation and transplantation in India, both from the perspectives of medical as uh, administration, how uh, you know medical as administration and hospitals feel about this, and also from recipients' perspectives, and how far we have progressed and how great is still the the need that there is. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Savant. Uh, so. I think uh, the whole question of organ donation is an extremely important uh, uh, topic that needs to be discussed, I would even say quite more openly than what we are used to. Now, going back to the history of organ donation, I think the bulk of the transplants and donation that happen in India have been in the live related program. And uh, I think uh, we, the first transplants took place somewhere early in 1970s. And from then to now, technologically, medically, there has been tremendous progress in leaps and bounds that we have come up to. But there is a huge gap uh, in terms of the requirement of what is there, what we would call as the demand supply gap in terms of the amount of uh, or the number of patients who are in need of a transplant and the number of donations that are actually happening. So we have the rough estimate is that over two lakh kidneys, fifty thousand livers, and hearts are needed, uh, uh, sort of to make up the gap, which is currently uh, the kind of number that we are talking about. Uh, as a country of one point two billion, I think we have the dubious distinction of having one of the highest number of road traffic accidents and head injuries, leading on to what we call the brainstem death in the in the world. About 1.5 lakh people die due to brain death following a head injury. And if you take the non-head injury uh, reasons for trauma for uh, brain death, it will probably add to a few more numbers. So if you say that out of the 1.5 lakh, our donation rates are about 0.262 or less than 0.5 per million, as compared to 25 in the US, 35 to 36 in Spain, we are abysmally low. So there is or donor pool which is available but at the same time the conversion of this donor pool to required uh, donations is extremely low so i think that is where the gap exists now if you talk about what progress we have made yes there have been multiple modifications made in the law there has been better understanding and awareness of the organ donation program if you go back when we were children we had the lot of advertisements about uh, eye donation or the corneal donation uh, blood blood donations now there are there, that's been a very successful program i think that is where we have to take some cues from and learn that as uh, with the adequate and appropriate use of mass media, mass communication, and today we have social media, it's extremely important that we spread this message because as I said, the potential for improving the donor pool is extremely high in our country. I'm not saying that 
it is a good uh, situation to be in to have 1.5 lakh deaths happening because of trauma head injury and such other associated causes but it is an it is a fact of life so i think making something good out of it is important of course we have to parallelly look at preventing these head injuries you know taking it that's a separate discussion we can touch upon some other time now the estimate is that if you even touch 1 per million in the indian context we would actually almost completely eliminate the live donation program which means that if the number of donations in the country rises from 0.26 which i told you to about 1 per million we are likely to meet our targets and the i mean meet our demand and the shortfall can be made up if we reach 2 per million in fact that's what we are looking at and Uh, if you look at 2 per million donations in a cadaver program or a deceased donor program it is very very low because if you look at as i said the western world we are talking about 25 26 uh, per million which is the average they talk about as compared to one or two which is which is our requirement so i think the target that is needed to bridge the demand is not much it is important to focus our energies and our resources to ensure that there is an appropriate um, understanding of this one now we have come a long way as i said in terms of laws in terms of understanding there is a gap in the number and the statistics which i have said and i think through the program we will discuss on how well we can further improve this and what are the steps and measures that we need to put into place to ensure that this gap is bridged now i am also like to say that it is uh, probably uh, naive to believe that this is not our problem this is not my problem this is the problem of the government this is the problem of somebody who is rich probably somebody who is in authority but i think it is to be understood that it would be the basic responsibility duty and the uh, and the goodwill of every citizen to actually come forward and ensure that this becomes a successful uh, sort of an uh, venture thank you for sharing that information sir um my next question is to dr deepak sir as dr sunil shared that we have an alarmingly high rate of demand to supply ratio for donated organs in india and with a country of having such large population also having such large numbers of accidents uh, wherein we would require such donations he also touched upon one thing uh, the two programs of organ donors the cadaver program and uh, the another one uh, so sir can you please explain what those are and what do they mean for our audience so you are on mute for organ yeah. donation there are essentially two types of uh, transplants as was alluded to one is a live living related transplant and the other is a deceased uh, donor transplant so deceased donors are the donors that you mentioned who have a sudden incident and they lose their lives but they are uh, you know their body functions can be maintained for a certain length of time with artificial machines and oxygenation but their brain is dead for all practical purposes this typically happens in people who have road traffic accidents or certain kinds of brain hemorrhages where things happen suddenly the brain loses its function completely and that's called brain death uh, but at the same time the various organs of the body can be maintained artificially with the ventilators and oxygenation but we can't do that for a very long length of time so these are the deceased organ donors who have undergone brain death for a variety of reasons but they, if their organs like the liver the heart the kidneys and many others can be preserved temporarily these organs can then be transplanted to needy patients who are in need of these organs the second type of um, uh, transplant is a living related transplant now that primarily works for kidney donors because uh, human beings are blessed to have two kidneys and one kidney can function and carry out the normal duties of life uh, without any problems for the whole life so one kidney can be donated and which is why a lot of people agree to donate their kidneys one of their kidneys to their near and dear ones so that they can have a uh, you know lease of life and the donor can also live a totally normal life for the whole for the entire length and similarly now in liver transplant also this process is being started where in part of the liver is removed 
from a donor and uh, transplanted to the recipient and the donor who gives a part of the liver can live a normal life uh, for the entire duration so liver and kidney you can do a living related transplant um whereas for heart and pancreas and others you cannot take it out because there is only one organ there so these are the two basic types of transplants and uh, the, the the problem is there are not enough number of living donors available or people are not willing to donate for various reasons or uh, they may be having other health concerns and so forth so um, the difference is in in the west it, it is primarily diseased organ donor donation as dr sunil mentioned whereas in india it still is dependent on live organ donation where relatives uh, have to you know donate their organs thank you so much for sharing that sir and that is very uh, peculiar to note that in uh, uh, western countries you have diseased organ donations and in india you have mo- majorly live so is there a particular reason that uh, india is not going into um the uh, disease organ donation aspect like other countries please explain yeah so the india is very deficient with disease organ donation and there are multiple reasons the primary thing is lack of awareness amongst lay people you know that this is a very um, um sort of uh, well accepted way of organ donation uh, there are a lot of myths about it you know they can be religious social you know again social and religious practices may preclude uh, allowing a you know brain dead person to donate their organs and a lot of myths are existing amongst lay people whether this is the right thing to do and you know people are not really sure whether they can go ahead with this that is one secondly there is a lack of incentive uh, from the government organizations which have to take a lead for primarily what is required for diseased organ donation to ha- is have a very robust um, medical machinery where you know accidents happen all over the you know all over the state now the hospitals where the brain dead patient is brought in should be well equipped to maintain their lives even if there is brain death they should be having a, a process of certification of brain death um in that hospital so that you know the process can be carried forward so this however is uh, hugely neglected uh, lacking in many of our uh, uh, states because the state is a health subject and it is the uh, the state sort of an initiation or enthusiasm which can really allow a diseased organ uh, donor uh, program to develop uh, in our country we have gujarat and tamil nadu uh, maharashtra now which are really you know putting progressive regulations in order to facilitate uh, you know this diseased organ donor do, uh, donation so changes are happening but it requires a lot of effort from the government side from the medical side from the lay people side and overall we have to keep doing you know initi- programs like this to create awareness of how important this is and that it can be safely done uh, these are the main things thank you so much for sharing that sir very uh, as you shared that uh, health is a state subject and these rules and regulations for uh, organ donation as well vary from one state to the other so uh, definitely we can see delving into this topic more in upcoming sessions maybe in do- organ donation because this discussion would be very far uh, uh, very wide otherwise but for this uh, session to be very uh, you know basic and uh, give basic awareness now i would like to touch upon the topic of donor matching because we've heard a lot that finding a proper donor match is very difficult um and in that entire process that comes along with finding a donor match and the complete journey of the donated organ from the you know donor's body to the recipient's body so um dr deepak can you please explain uh, elaborate the complete journey for our audience and how that goes um so the, the the process is very different for a living organ donation and for a diseased organ donation um in a living organ donation the process is very simple because both the donor o- operation and the recipient recipient operation are more or less started simultaneously in parallel ots and once the organ like the kidney or liver is retrieved from the donor it is immediately transplanted to the 
recipient in a diseased organ uh, kind of situation what happens is it requires a lot of coordination and there are existing state coordination committees we have a very good one in karnataka called zcck which coordinates uh, how an organ which is procured from a deceased donor can be trans- transferred which probably could be to another hospital in the city it could also be to a hospital in another city uh, and and they coordinate how where the organ will be allocated and how it will travel to the destined um, uh, recipient hospital and there is a formal process in this there are uh, ways that we preserve the organ while it is transported the government has cooperated to a great deal they prepare these green corridors wherein you know if the especially in the in the hard kind of situation you really have to move quickly where the organs can be trans- transported even by a helicopter from one state to another and they create green corridors so uh, this requires a lot of machinery to be active and uh, this kind of cooperation is required but it is it is evident that organs can be transported to different cities uh, to m- different hospitals in the same city the first question that you asked was about the matching nowadays the matching primarily requires the blood group to be you know matching between the uh, the donor and the recipient in a live related transplant we can even do an incompatible if the blood group is incompatible due to various uh, by various techniques we can uh, even transplant an organ where the blood group is not matching there are new techniques available whereas in a deceased organ donor we we cannot institute those techniques immediately so the matching of the blood group has to be there so these are the basic uh, differences between these two types of organ transplant thank you sir moving on to dr devananda sir as dr deepak shared that uh, the journey of uh, the donor from a uh, Uh, donor's body to recipient's body the organ when trans uh, you know what are the administrative level challenges that you know uh, doctors face and uh, the administration face when they are doing this uh, you know um, uh, movement of a, a donated organ from one body to the other what uh, what are the biggest challenges that uh, you can see and you face in your day to day life so that we can you know uh, evaluate them and somehow try to um, fix those challenges in uh, coming years thank you uh, <clears throat> just to add one thing before i start answering this question to what sunil already said we should be proud in our country this transplantation started in 1969 the fifth heart transplant plant in the world was done in india was attempted in india let me put it that way uh, that was in 1969 at ka hospital mumbai by dr pk singh he did the subsequent one i think those were the days when everybody was failing there was only one patient who had survived which christian bernard had done oh, but they ended it i mean they did just over after that i think everything was null for a very long period of time until 1994 when things become formalized in our country kidney picked up very well but the rest of the organs were going very slow i think over last one one and a half decade other organs have picked up very well so whatever transplant we talk of today the experiences which we got at different aspects of transplant is all from the renal transplantation point of view uh, kidney i mean the liver lung heart pancreas these are all just started maybe a decade or so now please by uh, deepak lot has been done in last 10 years in in various states which have taken you know or interested in this particular program to go forward including karnataka itself green card is one of the biggest thing which government has done the biggest problem for us who does the heart or the lung transplant is we always get it only from the deceased uh, donors donors can be in our own hospital <laughs> excuse me or donors can be elsewhere sometimes as far as 400 to 500 kilometers or even 1000 kilometers today organs have been trans- transported from say from ahmedabad to chennai or delhi to ahmedabad mumbai to chennai kind of thing uh, this is facilitated 
largely i think processes are in place governments are given as uh, green corridors at different levels clearances through the you know uh, airports is also expedited whenever we are transporting an organ but still yes there are smaller issues here and there especially at the airport levels which probably can be helped uh when it comes to inside a city yes it is always a big business to transport an organ in the day time because people do suffer when they are transporting say a heart from one hospital to another hospital because you know suddenly unexpected uh, stoppage of the traffic lots of nuisance to the public but yes uh, that is where some awareness is definitely required transporting an organ especially heart because time matters for us four hours is the golden period which we have so Uh, sometimes yes people have to bear with us so uh, barring that rest of the organizational or administrative things would be internal to a particular hospital or to a particular program yes transplant uh, in my opinion more than the technical aspect it's about organizing the person if an organization is very good in organizing different levels like procuring the organ and one end getting your donor and a recipient to come to your place getting donor aspect i um, mean the recipient aspect organized these are the biggest challenges you know it, it goes like a satellite launch or something everything is precise and should happen in that particular time so that we save the time through which an organ goes through you know an ischemic period a lack of blood supply so the, the, the crux of the whole thing for us in the acute phase of transplant is you stop the blood flow to the organ and you have to reestablish blood flow to the organ that period is very crucial for every organ kidney probably <coughs> they have the luxury uh, up to 24 hours it's all right for them shorter the time is always better but they can stretch it back to up to 24 hours rest of the organ liver probably is around 6 hours to 9 hours is the best period of time so also for the lungs but heart has got only 4 hours to go with so that's the best time we can go with uh, these are the uh, these are the important things with which we look into all organization capacity you are doing a heart it's different thing you are doing liver it is different thing uh, that's how i would say probably is that what you are looking at thank you so much for sharing uh, sir dr savant if i may just add as yes, dr devan mentioned uh, uh, i'm specifically restricting myself to the deceased donation as dr devanand rightly mentioned the whole process is has to be extremely streamlined it is that is where the the health system the authorities the jeeva sarthakata as we call the uh, new state uh, organ transplant coordinator uh, organ body is called a sotto uh, the jeeva sarthakate the hospital there and the recipient teams all need to be streamlined and there are see whenever there is a donation happening there are at least about 12 to 15 people who are behind the scene operating and coordinating all these things so there is a tremendous amount of effort and you know this thing that goes into it and the whole process of convincing the family to the recipient or the donation happening will go anywhere between 4 to 24 hours and uh, of course the shorter the time of what dr dr devan and said the ischemic time is very very important so it's important to make sure that the processes are well in place when an uh, entire donation process happens thank you dr sunil and thank you dr devanand i was uh, coming on this only uh, uh, the standard what do you feel so in order to optimize our ischemic time as you shared uh, standardization of uh, this uh, donation steps or the whole uh, process of donation and standardizing it or for all over the country would that be of a uh, good value or is there some sort of standardization already in place when it comes to uh, the organizational transport and logistics and organ retrieval or do you feel that this cannot uh, you know uh, be possible as you know different states have different rules what do you feel so, uh, starting with dr sunil yeah so i think uh, i will use the word standard protocol i think to use the word standardization in medicine may not be the apt thing to do because every patient and every situation is different so when we talk about uh, having a standard protocol i think we have to divide it into the 
part of the protocol or part of the work that goes before the family agrees and the part that happens after the family agrees so before the family agrees there is a situation where we need to identify what we call as potential donors now somebody may have not been declared brain dead yet but there is like all possibilities that they are heading in that direction so that's where the role of the intensive care and the other medical teams comes in to ensure that there is optimal physiology maintained once the organ donation decision has been taken and what we call as the death of the brain has been declared based on standard operating procedures protocols which are medically legally accepted which is uh, you know no rocket science it has been well tested for over 3 4 decades so there's no doubts about that part then comes the play of putting the entire apparatus into action which includes identifying the recipients alerting the recipient teams getting the recipient to the relevant uh, you know place where the transplant is likely to happen ensuring the transplant the transport of the organs happen to whichever part of the city or state it is likely to go so these are all the complex things that happen after that so that's how you roughly divide the pre and the post kind of thing to happen and of course then uh, the rest of it will be done by the relevant recipient teams now in this part the ischemic time matters where once a decision is taken the patient or the donor is transported to the ot and once the clamps have been put and you actually retrieve the organ from the donor retrieval to actually transplant that is the time which has to be the shortest and that is the time when everything should be already ready to go very rightly said sir coming on to dr devananda again sir uh, for heart uh, as you have shared for heart transplants we have the shortest time about 4 hours so uh, how do you feel that lack of awareness on the re recipients uh, uh, side of family and the donors uh, lack of awareness and everything how does that compound into the uh, difficulties faced and what you know major role can awareness through these sessions and um, uh, you know initiatives like these can play in uh, streamlining this process as well as uh, optimizing the ischemic time that we have so as far as uh, <coughs> donor awareness is concerned i think sunil has elaborated very well there's nothing much that i should add in the sense uh, we come into picture only when the family is almost agreed to donate until such time it's only an alert which the organization should give that there is a donor who probably is willing to uh, willing for organ donation uh, that is the time we alert our recipients so come and get admitted so there may be a possibility now sometimes towards the end it has happened even till the last moment until these donors have been built into the ot for whatever reason the next of the kin or somebody it draws the consent it won't progress that's the law if, if they can be, they can withdraw their consent till the last moment so if such a thing happens the program stops the recipient has to go back these things happen in in, in this is donors uh, but luckily most of the teams who are into that today they understand most and more and more hospitals are understanding the need so they are taking time they are making the uh, prospective donors who has been there this is donors especially understand the whole thing behind this the the philosophy behind the donation and somehow it's it's a very difficult job it's very difficult job when it comes to heart i think we come into picture most probably after that so the biggest challenge is before as i said there are definitely set of people who are working behind and we become more of technical people rather than those who are motivated but yes certainly the awareness has to increase one of the biggest factor i personally feel in our uh, country is the trust factor as deepak said there are lots of faith beliefs religious things one end the other end is trust there are people even today they think that uh, you know medical people are pushing donations more than what is required some of them may not be brain dead you heard what happened in kerala some time ago donations practically came to an end so these are all the things which should go now how do we address that most probably a bigger role has to be played by the governments bigger celebrities who can coach that this process are very transparent and these are tested scientifically and somebody has to 
uh, probably convince the public that there is no myth or there is no uh, kind of deceiving someone. It's not been pushed so that we get the organ out of SLO and benefit many. Mm-hmm. And hospitals make money. That should go. Um, so that's, that's one of the biggest hindrance for most of the, this happens. Every month we will have one patient who has agreed through the process. Last yeah. moment somebody will come and withdraw the consent. You know? uh, I think <coughs> there must be more than one way of addressing that. But I think that government has a long uh, role to play here and a very strong role to play here that these processes are very foolproof. Not that people can take things in their hands and, and these are all reliable. Once somebody has said that they've gone through the process, donation can be done. Yes, it can be done. It is mm-hmm. what I think is the thing. If I can add to what Dr. Devanan said, I yes, think okay. uh, 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 rightly so, as Sir said, it is very important to have uh, all aspects of uh, you know, uh, of or all stakeholders, if I may say, to be involved, the public, private, laymen, lay public. Uh, and, uh, you know, it is very important to understand this, this process of declaring brainstem death and donation harvesting from a deceased donor is not something only we follow in India. It is followed right across the world. And it is a process which has been going on for well over four to five decades. So it is uh, unnecessary to sort of, you know, put uh, roadblocks and, you know, create uh, doubts and myths in the mind of people, which I think uh, it's very important that uh, different stakeholders, including the media, the journalists, everybody pitches in to eliminate these kind of uh, suspicions and doubts, which are unnecessarily harming the, you know, the uh, the recipients or the people who, who are in real need of these organs. Thank you, Dr. Sunil. Thank you, Dr. Devananda, uh, for sharing brilliant ideas, what we can do and how, you know, different organizations can come together to support, you know, uh, proper donations and more streamlined and e- efficient uh, donation process. So um, moving on to the brighter side, Dr. Devanand, can you please talk about any advanced facilities that you have been working with when it comes to heart transplants and um, any latest interventions that you've been adopting uh, in India? Uh, I think, see, the by and large, if you look at it, any place which can do a standard cardiac surgical practice can do a transplant. But as there are uh, now and then when you're dealing with difficult transplants and sometimes re reoperation, those who require transplants, yes, uh, there are a whole lot of even technological support like whether, you know, the monitoring blood, blood flow to the brain during the reopening processes because you have to be expeditious. At the same time, you have to be safe. So those are there. And if some some of these patients can bleed, so there is a way of collecting those blood, salvaging and giving it back in a safe way to this patient. Uh, heart patients, especially if the lung pressures are way too high, we have to have a way to get it down to uh, nitric oxide, which is given through a special machine as an inhaled gas. So these are all the kind of standard steps which are available, which are available in Manipal and sure available in any uh, center which is taken of these programs. Uh, that is about at the moment as far as the heart is concerned. When it comes to the lung, yes, now EVLP. Perfusing these organs once we retrieve them, keeping them warm rather than bringing them to cold to uh, arrest their metabolism, is the practice which is happening in many European countries mainly, to some extent in America and Canada. Uh, the idea behind this is you can transport these organs for long distance. Suppose if there is a donor in Kashmir, we can get those argal down to Karnataka, for example. So time doesn't matter because you are perfusing this argal. Uh, these are all happening in the West because uh, at the moment, I, I do not think that will happen in our country. We have to innovate our own way of doing that because of the cost constraint. These te- technologies are way too expensive. An average transplant, a heart transplant in our country may cost anywhere around 15 to 20 lakhs of rupees. Uh, for various reasons, if you have to do the things in the right way. That itself is beyond the reach of so many. Now, you look at a technology like TVLP, uh, it, it adds probably three times the cost to that, which uh, very, very few can uh, you know, uh, afford. So it, it's not become very common, but I'm sure 
parallel technologies to that would arise in our own country as this program takes off in a better way. Thank you for sharing those, sir. And uh, we are uh, optimistic that all the new greatest technologies that are there available in the West would come to India in uh, definitely in uh, re uh, coming years. Uh, coming on to Dr. Deepak, so can you please share um, a similar uh, sort of technologies that you have been using or the other countries are using when it comes to renal transplants? So of all the organ transplants that uh, we're talking about, heart, liver, uh, kidney is uh, probably the most common. It, it is technically simpler than a liver transplant or a heart transplant or a pancreas transplant. More straightforward. Um, so a lot of, and probably the oldest type of transplant was the kidney transplant, the most popular and successful. The others have come in later uh, or being popularized later. So as far as kidney transplant is concerned, there have been efforts over the years in order to improve the outcomes uh, with the use of technology for our kidney transplant recipients. And uh, the new way of doing it is by using the robot, the medical robot, which is now being used for almost every other kind of operation across the body. So even the robot has been being used for doing a kidney transplant and it has various benefits like it is done using a keyhole surgery. Uh, the recovery is much faster. Uh, patient goes home much earlier. They have less pain and they get back to life uh, much faster than a traditional, which is an open incision, cutting the, you know, the muscles and then doing the transplant, which is the, the traditional way. So technology is coming in a big way in, in terms of renal transplants also. And primarily, um, in that matter, India has taken a lead uh, compared to the West in doing the robotic transplants. Uh, most of the large centers in um, uh, transplant centers in India have now switched over to robotic transplants. At Manipal Hospital also we are doing robotic transplants. And secondly, for the donor, kidney donor also, we now retrieve the donor kidney by keyhole surgery, which is again much faster, simpler, less painful. Very quickly, the donor recovers, uh, which is which is called laparoscopy. So laparoscopy and robotics uh, is are the technologies that have come in a big way uh, to improve outcomes of kidney transplants. Thank you for sharing that, sir. Just to set things clear for our audience, by faster, what do you mean uh, for the donor? How was the recovery time? How many weeks were it before? And with these technologies, how is it now? Yeah. So for the donor, the, see, the donor is a healthy person. You know, it's, it's, they don't have any disease. So the donor, at least from the medical perspective, we want to um, have the donor surgery done in the least painful way, the quickest way. And the donor, since it's a healthy person and doing a noble cause, should have the minimum amount of suffering, which is involved with any kind of operation. So with the traditional way where a cut was made in the upper part of the body with the ribs being cut and the kidney being removed, uh, there would be more pain, more stay in the hospital. Uh, and it would take about a month to completely recover and start doing their normal things. Many of them want to go back to work or even do their uh, you know, household work. It would take minimum four to six weeks to achieve that. Now with the newer techniques, of especially laparoscopy, uh, you know, they're able to leave the hospital on the second or third day. And within two weeks, they're able to bounce back to a normal living. Uh, so that is a big advantage. And of course, the pain is much lesser when you do it with the keyhole technique. So that way, uh, you know, it is a kinder operation for donors who deserve that. Thank you so much for sharing that. So four to six weeks down to two to three days is definitely great and amazing progress that India has made when it comes to kidney uh, renal transplants. Now moving on to the next aspect, which is rapid fire busting myths. So I would request all uh, the uh, doctors to just answer in a very short and precise way as we have multiple questions. Starting from uh, with Dr. Sunil, sir, can you please elaborate the different types of organ donations that can be done? 
So it's already been alluded to, there are uh, two categories, what we call as live related, where there is a live person who is related, we do live related in the Indian law, uh, donates the organ to the his next of kin. And there is what is called as disease donor donation, where uh, somebody has a catastrophic brain injury, either traumatic, non-traumatic, gets declared as brain dead, and his organs can be used for uh, more than eight recipients. So you were talking about two people getting kidney, one liver, so at least a minimum of eight people get benefited. There is also an entity called uh, donation after cardiac death, which is uh, probably not yet very mature in the Indian context, where somebody is admitted with irreversible physiological disease, where the likelihood of recovery is poor. And uh, in that case, the tr mode of treatment gets switched to what we call as palliative care. And after the heart stops, so the organs can be retrieved on that context. So these are the two or three methods by which we consider uh, organ donations. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving on to Dr. Devananda. Sir, what all different organs can be donated and what are the criteria for donating, uh, you know, uh, organs such as cornea, liver, kidney and different other organs? What are the major criteria that need to be kept in mind? Yeah, the one of your questions you answered yourself. So one can donate cornea, one can donate lung, one can donate uh, kidney, uh, the liver, intestine, pancreas. These are the things which are generally you know, happening. Skin is another thing which also used as a donation. Bone grafts are taken as donation. So these are all the things one can practically, most of the important organs in our systems can be donated except the brain. Now, uh, general criteria are there for most of the organs that one should be infection free when you are donating. One should not have a cancer which is spread all over. Two most important criteria for them. Other things are all relative criteria. You know, uh, group matching, as we said, and all that. These are all relative criteria. Age. Age is also kind of relative criteria. Even though we say that younger and the healthier donor, it's better for the rest of the end. That's about it. On the same note, we have another question, which is, is there an age limit for being an or or organ donor? Dr. Devanand, to you. Only. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, we say most of the solid organs like uh, liver, kidney, heart, and all that. We say that 55 is probably the best age. Less than 55 is the best donor for anyone of us. Yes, there are exceptions. This is not a rule of thumb. If somebody is practically healthy and there are no other risk factors, even I think we can extend it up to 65. But they all become what is known as kind of extended criteria for donation. But by and large, we take it as around 55 is the kind of accepted cutoff age for a donor. Uh, great. So moving on to Dr. Deepak next. Sir, uh, what would be the timeline for donating various organs for our audience to be aware of? Uh, timeline means, uh, Sorry, you know what, once please. an organ... So once, if if a person is willing to commit to donate organs after, uh, you know, death um, and uh, they have signed the paperwork and everything before. So what would be the timeline for retrieval of that organ or different organs after death time? Yeah. So the critical point is the <clears throat> maintaining the body, especially the blood pressure and the heart functioning well till the time the organs are retrieved because the blood flow to the organs have to be, has to be preserved well. And that is very important before we take a decision to remove any organ and make a successful donation. So once the formal processes of uh, brain death have been accomplished and the consent has been given, then the appropriate, it is as soon as possible once the formalities are done, and it's very critical that the body is being maintained, which is usually done by our ICU staff. And in Manipal, we have an excellent ICU department, which has been doing this for, for quite some time, maintaining the body well till the organs are retrieved. So once the formal uh, you know, clearances have been obtained, it should be as soon as possible. So things really have to move fast because then one has to identify you know, the potential recipient for a heart, for a kidney for the liver and the various other organs. And then that is where this HCCK or the state control uh, 
authority steps in where they have a list of people who have been waiting uh, for these various organs and the once the medical team certifies that these organs are healthy uh, the liver is good condition heart is good and kidneys are good and if that clarity is obtained then immediately the recipients are organized to come to the hospital and get the formalities done so it is it should be done as soon as possible but importantly the decision to certify the patient as brain dead is a very critical one because it is very ethical and moral decision also and one has to be very careful that we we are not you know uh, cutting any corners here so once that decision is made by the appropriately certified people the process is to be done as quickly as possible very nicely explained sir okay so moving on to dr sunil next sir which organ is donated the most and why and which organ is the hardest to obtain in india and why so i think uh, the first part of the question has already been alluded to it's that kidney is the most uh, 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 number of donations which have happened in the country uh, i will stick largely to the disease donor program because as dr devan and already said there are certain organs which can be retrieved only from the deceased patients uh, i think the most difficult would be uh, to some extent the pancreas but more importantly the lungs in fact if you look at a situation of what we call as multi organ harvesting donor in a disease donation this is when somebody has been declared brain dead the conversion rate of retrieving the lung is less than 25% while most other organs would be able to go through uh, provided the criteria are met and the age limit particularly for the heart etc is met but I, in a situation of that i think the lung is the most sensitive organ and of course if they it's a older patient then uh, heart is not something which is often considered thank you so much sir moving on to dr devananda next sir does having systemic diseases such as diabetes and hypertension and others interfere with organ donation process it can interfere over i mean if they have already produced a complication for the donor if they have not produced any complication no that's not the contraindication to donate the organ Okay, great. So, moving on to Dr. Deepak next, sir, can transplanted organs be donated again? Is that possible? Sir, you are on mute. Mute, mute. It is certainly not common, or I would say it is very uncommon. But there have been incidences wherein a patient has undergone a transplant of a kidney. and the kidney is working very successfully in the transplanted patient and the transplant patient then becomes brain dead for for some reason and that kidney is retrieved and then transplanted to a second recipient so one kidney could travel be- between three patients this has happened uh, this is a bit of a challenging procedure it's very uncommon but certainly it is doable the problems that happen is once a kidney has been operated Uh, for that matter liver there the, the surgery becomes more challenging to re- retrieve such an organ and uh, but it can be done that's that's the answer it can certainly be done if the right criteria have been met thank you so much sir on to you only dr deepak uh, does the gender of the donor play a role in organ donation if so is it important to check for every organ or only for kidneys the gender yes no gender doesn't play any role uh, in deciding about who can be a donor a uh, male or a female can be you know there's no difference in that sense that uh, there is any difference between the gender uh, as far as donation is concerned but you know there is so much data now that it, so many articles appear in the newspaper where in our society is such that it is women uh, tend to be more commonly donating their organs as compared to men that kind of an imbalance is there in society and it, there are various reasons for it uh, but they they are, you know we, perhaps it's because we started off as a patriarchal society and wherein the woman was supposed to do most of the sacrifices and so forth but that is the other thing that uh, we need to create awareness about is that it need not necessarily always be the lady who's uh, donating you know it can be the other way around because both both genders can live completely normal lives after a trans after they have 
donated their organs so there is no difference but the 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 data is skewed more to in favor of uh, you know women donating more in this country especially thank you sir uh, dr suni sir if the donor smokes and drinks alcohol is he still eligible to donate kidney and lungs and liver after death or would that hamper yeah so uh, kidney certainly so the liver and lung will be based on uh, knowing the health of the liver and the lung so it's not an absolute contraindication but uh, it's important to ensure that the functioning and the structure of the liver is optimal uh, before the donation is done so there are you know in a live related program all necessary checks are done on the donor before a decision is taken of course for the lung uh, disease donor we are always uh, going to look at uh, various aspects to decide on this but if there is no uh, as dr devanand already mentioned in the case of diabetes if there is no damage that has been already caused on the functioning and the structure of the organ there is no reason not to donate thank you sir with uh, the last remaining 9 minutes left let us move on to the next uh, last segment of our discussion uh, these uh rapid fire questions definitely do clear lots of uh, myths that are prevailing around organ donation and to wrap it all up these questions are open for all uh my first question would be how can we eliminate the stigma and fear that people have around donating their organs one such measure as pointed out by dr devananda was having uh, popular people vouching for the process and um, uh, you know urging the masses for you know uh, uh, looking into this and going into that but other than that what measures can be done and what all yet is required to encourage more and more people to go for organ donations uh, shall i take it yes sir please yeah so i think uh, we can't have a single uh, uh, approach kind of method for this it has to be a multifaceted multilateral approach uh, it's very important that uh the government facilitates the process now i started with the government not to say that there is no role by the lay public i think that is where the biggest challenge would lie in fact it unless we accept that the organ donation or you uh, know organ donation is an important altruistic noble gesture and no amount of religious social or any form of impediment should come in the way of organ donation and i don't think there is any religion or any culture which would actually say that donation is wrong if you look at the scriptures or any other sort of holy books of any of the religion it is uh, donation is a noble gesture and that's why it's always it's all said as a gift of life or a very altruistic nature so i think it's very important to en- understand to highlight this to the lay public and i think it, in this task uh, government plays a role and the main role of the government would be to only facilitate and control and regulate the thing to prevent any sort of you know uh, misuse of the system but i think more than that it is the voluntary pr- uh, organizations the healthcare facilitators the healthcare uh, industry the healthcare providers who all should play a big role by not only leading from the front but also in important in clearing uh, and creating awareness thank you so much sir um the next question is how does the future of organ donation in india look like what are the challenges and opportunities do you see foresee that could arise in future if we are doing good or you know not doing so good you know dr deepa yeah so the challenges are mainly stem from promotion of and and propagation of the deceased organ donor um, program and that is where the major challenges are but we have a lot of hope has been given by three states i would rather say four states uh, one role model has been gujarat where the government has taken all these steps in order to sensitize people educate people and at the same time facilitate and uh, remove all bureaucratic hurdles uh, and medical hurdles that were existing for this program not to progress smoothly and they have shown that this can be done in a country like india so we should it, it looks bright so we should take encouragement from such states 
uh, and similarly tamil nadu has is almost matching gujarat maharashtra is doing well telangana is doing well uh, comparatively other states have not taken off but that is primarily due to uh, you know slow pace in in moving in this direction from the government side so there is a lot to look forward to because changes are already happening and the more we you know lay people and you know the privileged people and the popular people like religious heads uh, film stars sports personalities big people you know public people come and speak about it and the doctors and the government do what they can I, I i really think this is going to only improve in the long run it may be you know like the india in the, the pace is always likened to an elephant um a slow movement but progressive movement so we are moving in that direction and the more we discuss these uh, challenges we will move ahead and we have role models now to to kind of guide us because some states have already moved very ahead in this direction so it's it looks bright thank you so much sir moving on to dr devananda sir uh, talking about transplants and organ donation in urban setting is one thing and talking about the same for rural settings is an entirely different chapter so how do you feel the scenario of transplants in rural settings can can be you know uh, improved and so that we have better availability and reach for such treatments all across india i think it's largely uh, based on the particular state governments how much health care facilities are there at different levels like district level and taluk level uh, the the primary i think karnataka is doing i think as deepak said many states have done very well there the primary health care has to improve then probably comes the tertiary health care in that direction i think many steps are taken now the government in karnataka has also decided that they are going to have at least ten centers where organs can be retrieved across karnataka which is a very good gesture similarly i think opening up uh, facilities either by the corporates or by the government in the tier 2 tier 3 cities probably would go a long way there are organs even there donors as well as recipients both are there at that level we should look into that now one example is look, look at what uh, infosys has done for example i can give you they have opened a setup cadex facility they funded in hubli spent definitely more than 100 crores out there so it's going to help that particular zone especially the people who are coming from uh, underprivileged area and various states definitely have come out with certain amount of financial benefits to the uh, recipients you know to help the surgeries as well as take care of their post operative care i think that that's the way forward i think uh, private as well as public both can do something there thank you so much sir wrapping up the informative dis- uh, discussion that we had wherein we cleared the basic doubts as well as looked into uh, uh, approaches such as having a multi prong approach for uh, pr- uh, promotion of uh, organ donation all across india as well as uh, uh, promotion of organ donation uh, programs in different states uh, looking at the example from gujarat uh, and other particular states which are doing well as well as focusing on uh, you know uh, uh, focusing state governments uh, um attention on rural settings as well for this uh, uh selected thing we come to the end of our session my last request to all our uh, uh, expert doctors is to give one take away message for the audience for encouragement starting with dr sunil um so i think uh, the one take away message i would want to say is that uh this is not the program of only the government i think it is important to understand that this should come from every individual citizen and perhaps it is important to consider this as our important duty to actually ensure that each one of us pledge ourselves to organ donation and pledging is not a difficult task uh, there are centers which do that you can actually download the form from the ministry of health website and do that and i think it's important to understand that this should be considered as a noble altruistic gesture and something that we can that anybody can do the richest of the rich and the poorest of the poor dr devananda next i would say i think uh, whenever we come across this unfortunate uh, incident especially the business to one 
uh, whose organs could be used everybody should come forward donate so that somebody else or many can live in the name of that single person we know that seven to eight people it can benefit please come forward and donate there are no myths about it if you are not a donor or if you know the donor family or if you can influence the donor family to donate i think that itself is a big thing then i mean equal to almost donating please come forward and help as sunil said join hands only then we can probably help many more from from the, those who are so unfortunate dr deepak your message to the audience yeah my message to the public is organ donation is very safe it is very successful if it is a living related donation you are doing you are you are making a big huge change in your near and dear ones life and you too can live a life very you know like a normal person and of course if by god forbid somebody goes into a diseased organ state a diseased organ donor kind of situation then you don't stand anything to lose you you benefit at least 6 to 8 people who you give them a new life and in a way your legacy and your organs live on so this is the message i would like to give thank you thank you i would like to thank all our uh, expert doctors for taking out time from their busy schedule and for sharing insightful information with our audience i also would like to thank all our audience for staying with us till the very end lastly i thank manipal hospitals for such a noble cause uh, and uh, spreading awareness on this topic of organ donation which is truly a gift of life and we with is similar efforts we would like to encourage everybody to look into this and help whoever is in need whenever you get the chance thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.